okay, we are uh, we're starting the midweek howl, the non paranormal part of the From the Shadows podcast. I'm here with the howler. You want to say something, howler? Give him something. A howl. Something. All right. All right. We we did a sound check beforehand, so hopefully Phil is happy. Uh, you know, what he was happy with our sound last week, howler. So let's just keep doing the same thing, right? We're here to make Phil happy. He thought that he got he got a kick out of that. That we, that, that we are there for him. That we are there for him. He's there for you know, now. Phil is getting ready to shoot a movie starting. Uh, I think we're recording this Sunday, so he's going to start Monday morning. He's going. He's starting to shoot a. They're starting to shoot a Where's movie. Where's it at? I mean, is it top secret? No, they're going to film it there or around Ashland, where uh, the movie studio is. I think the judge and I are going Friday night. Um, we have a very small part in the movie. We're shooting a scene. So uh, we're going to do that Friday night, I believe, is what the schedule well, kind of, is. I mean, killing scene, violence. You guys do usually do some violent stuff, don't you? Mm, this is not violent. This is very um, surprise. The judge is playing a judge. <laughs> well, it makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, they kind of ask him to do some... Uh, technical uh work by you know reviewing the uh uh script for that part and sure. it turned into like well, why don't you just come and play the judge and i think i'm gonna play the bailiff and uh chris han is the defendant in the movie um so it's kind of uh it might be a scene worth fast forward and i don't know we'll see <laughs> but it's you're see, not, you're not- it's a, it's a horror movie. It's called Harvest. So uh, I think I can tell that. I think I can say that it's uh, called Harvest. So we'll let everybody know when it comes out. It'll be probably be, obviously it'll be a while if it hasn't started shooting. So, but uh, there, there you go. Now, now, so Phil's busy. So that's you know we got to make it easy on him so he doesn't. That's have to right. Do a lot so of- that's what I asked you when we did our little town so because I put the snow mall right here. I'm actually uh, working on my posture. I'm sitting up straight. I'm not leaning back about ten feet away from my microphone, which I usually do. Um, I think Phil should be super happy. And you I know think what I'm- I like, and I don't. I probably got one of the box of my oldest kid stuff. Is is. You, they have a mic stand, right? I mean, this thing is built. I can yeah. see how it's built mm-hmm. to thread onto like a mic stand as opposed to the little tripod thing I got. But how, do the mic stands attach to the wall or to the desk or how they how they do that? Um, I have a mic stand that sits on the desk. So my mic, my mic is screwed into the mic stand here. But it also came, we do have some mics that uh, can't come on like a big arm. They kind of clip onto the desk, sort of. So... But I don't have those with me, so there you go. So I did want to, <clears throat> I did want to, um, I did want to share something with you. We have a, we, we had a new member join Patreon last week, and she sent us a real nice message. Um, she said uh, her name's Karen, and she says <laughs> I, I love. <laughs> But it's a good Karen. I'm okay. loving your po- I'm loving your podcast. The Howler is a character and keeps me hanging on every word. Well, I hope she's not caring from the post office. You're not gonna care enough here at the post office. I told you, Ooh. my post office. Mm-hmm. You, do you? I don't. I don't think it is because I sent this Karen. When you sign up for Patreon, you get some stickers. So I sent her some stickers. I don't want to. Oh, I'm okay. not going yeah, to. Not going to tell everybody where. I'm not going to tell everybody where that. Well, I've never met a bad Karen. That's why I don't know. But my kids' generation seem to think Karen means crazy. Well, it is because isn't Karen like? Didn't it become like a meme? I think some um, woman named Karen was yelling at somebody, right? Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. Or it wasn't from the Tiger King. Was it? Yeah, that wasn't it. Wasn't the the bad lady Carol Baskin? I you know Carol to say that. I, oh that no, name. that's Carol. I've Carol. never watched the Tiger King. My little brother, you know, because I talked to my little brother the other day after I watched uh, Jake Brennan's Badlands. He had an episode on it. You know what I mean? I'm going back. I, I started back. I think I've said this before, and I'm, I'm listening to all his. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had one on the Tiger King. And I called my brother and I said, dude, you know what this guy just said in this podcast? This, this, and this. And he kept saying, yeah, I wanted you to watch it. And yeah, it was Carol. 
when that or Carol Baskin. Yeah, but was it Carol or Karen? It was Carol. It was right? Carol. So, I don't know. Shit, I don't know, man. Let's just <laughs> this entertainment. You just make it up, dude. You don't think these people really believe the stories I tell you, do you? <laughs> anyway, you're Karen not recording, has... are you? Oh, you have a recording. Oh, so no Ka- Karen said some really nice things. I thought you'd enjoy that. You know, she's hanging on every word. So I. Uh, no, she said some other really nice things. Groupie too. number one. Yeah, yeah. So. So it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, and speaking of Patreon, I got it on the schedule. So in July, you and I are going to do a Patreon live. I don't know what day, but uh, it is I'm July on... now, dude. I know it's a third over. Okay, it's it's going to have to be. It's a third it's over. Gonna, it's going to have to be. That. It's going to have to be the last, probably the last week in July because we have the fair next week. I just and, closed out the fair. Did you? So how was the fair out there? You know what I really like? The fair has a certain, and you will understand this, fair goes, I, the, what I really enjoy about the fair, I'm not even going to say what I was going to say. Oh, come on. But Karen it, is it, hanging it's, on it's every word. Spell. You know what? I, <laughs> I, I like it, not the, see, I think your fair is probably a lot bigger than our fair, right? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know about that. So I got a real good friend of mine here that, that cries every time the fair rolls around, they change his, his dad. Um, you know, he's our age. His dad and grandpa were instrumental in building the arena like it is, like it was. And then because attendance, because the town is kind of, I don't want to say dying, but dying, you know, it's certainly changing. They changed the arena in the, in the, uh, the grandstand that this guy had helped him build when he was in high school. And, and Saturday, I just want to say, dude, uh, you guys built it 40 years ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's mad they tore it down and moved it. And and they don't do the rodeo like they used to because more people show up for the smash-up derbies. So what I was going to say is the smell. I like going between – when you walk between the livestock barns and the 4-H building, there is a smell. And whether you're your fair or my fair or the state fair, there's that, that smell. Does that make sense? That you know you're at the fair. Yeah, it's a big if difference. If I get too close to the to – yeah. the, to the thing it's methanol and whatever blue turbo blue or whatever those race cars uh run but by the barns it's got a smell that i just remember being a kid you know what i mean it's like new mown hay or, or alfalfa you know certain smells you can you know i could be blindfolded in 50 years be blind or whatever but i'll know the, that i'm at the fair if you bring me by one of them barns yeah absolutely and it's <laughs> what's um with having had kids now for Oh God! I don't know how many years. Uh, Fifteen years showing at the fair, meaning they had animals. Mm-hmm. You know, from my old, from my middle two to mm-hmm. to all the way to. Is, so when they got animals, it's it's eight days because you're there the day before. Sure, you're there all day long. You're feeding. You're doing stuff, and man, you could tell. You could tell by Thursday, Friday of the fair when you're walking by the other parents. You're all looking at each other like it's almost over. <laughs> you know, it's been right. a long oh, week. yeah. It's almost over. Oh, uh, and I and um I I don't see my kid showed at a fair the next county over because Gabby, my my one daughter, suffered from migraines. And so the fair here in our county happens next week in the, in July. And so he really, really affected her. Okay. So she got a pass along with my other daughter to show at the Wyandotte County Fair, which shows like the second or third week in September. So it's much cooler. It's nicer. And, uh, and my stepdad at the time was, you know, in the sales committee had just built the goat barn and stuff. And that fair, the Wyandotte County Fair taking place in September in the middle, you know, Friday nights, high school football. And it's just, it really feels like what a fair to me should feel like. Like it seems, and I know it's hard for, and fairs have changed over the years because there's not a lot of small time farmers, but I understand, understand, Mm -hmm. you know, like in September, you're starting to get into harvest and not everybody could do fairs and stuff. But uh, to me, I love that when it's a little bit cool and, and, you know, you got to throw a sweatshirt on and it's, you know, it's just not a million degrees because sweating in the fair. (laughs) In July sun and the fair just does not go together for me. You know, sometimes our fair is so hot, you can't take it. You don't, nobody even wants to be there during the day. 
Sure. You know, yeah, I the, can totally see that. When the animal suffered and stuff. But but no, I think the county fair is, uh, we went, um, Izzy showed at a jackpot hog show last week at the fair south of us, the Marion County Fair. And it was, it was the first time I had ever been there. And it's 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 not a bad fair. Did you? A lot, did of, you, people, a lot of people there. Did you haul the hogs in the back of the new? I know you got you got a suburban, right? Not a Tahoe, suburban, right? Listen, I don't haul anything anymore because my brother-in-law because I, does the hogs, I'm so they're all you, into it. Yeah, yeah. I'm all. gonna send you a video. I I took a video of. Uh, I really just was gonna do it because I was gonna somehow do it, save the sound as my children, there was some hogs squealing on one side. You know, sometimes when they just got some show pigs, little pigs, these guys, these teenage boys, they just, they pick them up and carry them to the truck or trailer, wherever they need them. You know what I mean? They don't jack around with, with, you know what I'm saying? Driving them like cows or anything. So I had, I was trying to record the thing. I was going to do the audio as my kids, different rings. So each kid, when they called me had a different squeal. So <laughs> when I heard these pigs squealing, I got my phone out to 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 because I wanted to video it, and I was just having to video around. I'm going to send it to you now. Don't watch it while we're on here because it'll take away. <laughs> so as I'm watching this, these people carry these two pigs screaming. My one boy, the little boy's got one by his back legs. He's kind of because he ain't quite big oh. enough to drag it, but Dad is carrying one. And they walk over to a brand new, and I'm going to say about $86,000 Tahoe because I seen some the other day at the dealership, and that's about what they're going for now. And they hit the auto open on this back door of this Tahoe, and they put these two squealing pigs behind the third seat. <laughs> now, as funny as that is, he had a he had a if you watch carefully, you can see a clothes basket. And when the dad put the first pig in the clothes basket, he wrapped him with a blanket like you'd swaddle a baby, and it quit squealing. <laughs> so those pigs were used to, like, just riding in the back. Riding in the Tahoe, the LTZ2, behind the leather seat in the back gate. And, of course, I sent that to my brother, <laughs> who's in the car business, and I said, can you believe they put these two pigs in the back of this new Tahoe? Now, they were clean pigs or show pigs, you know? And that's oh, yeah, some of those show back. some of those he show text, pigs probably cost twenty thousand dollars. That's what he said. He said, "Hey, some of those show pigs, if they're show pigs, that they, they're worth tens of th- he didn't say tens. He said thousands of dollars. Might be if the right one might be worth more than the truck." <laughs> so I guess that shows my ignorance, right? I mean, that's why I'm not in the show business. That's why I'm not in the show pig business. Cause I got six country hams hanging right now that, cause if I had a show pig, it'd never get full, uh, fully mature. Cause I'd put him in the skillet, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, there's something to be said for a good slice of bacon. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but that's, that's the way my brother-in-law and them, they got some, they got some high dollar pigs, I think. And I just don't get involved like I, with the pigs, like, you know, when my girls had steers and Izzy at the horse and, and stuff, I can handle all that. I just, a pig barn it is just too nasty for me. It just really is. The smell is just, it, there's just and nothing like do it. huh? No. Well, I don't, the problem not is. Not unless you is, have to. Not unless, I, I'll go help if I got to, but Izzy can drive now and she likes to go and, you know, gets hurt. She drives across the county and goes hang out, hang out with my, you know, my brother-in-law, my nieces and nephews and nephew and nieces and has a good old time with them. And, you know, so she she don't need us. We just show up for the show, watch the show, and that's it. So we're perfectly fine with that. <laughs> we only got a couple more years of it. So, you know, uh, how it goes. We'll, we'll probably miss it, but I don't know. We were out there cleaning the camper tonight, scrubbing the camper. Christy likes to keep stuff clean. And so we're clean. We cleaned the camper on the outside so we can tow it there Friday for the fair next week. It can get all dirty, you know? <laughs> but it'll look so clean. you're gonna stay in the camper down to fairgrounds no i am not she and izzy do i do not okay there you i go. don't i don't uh if i can if i'm within driving distance of my bed i'm driving to my bed it's just uh that's just the way it is that's where you're at in life 
<laughs> That's where I'm at. I understand. Oh, mm-hmm. Did I ever tell you what what happened to the camp a couple years ago when I took it in to the Who fair? Took it to the fair? No, I don't remember. So you know you winterize. Yeah. Camp. Yep. Okay. Yep. You should. We, yeah. That's right. You should. Even though we put ours in ours in storage, you you winterize them. You know. And so what we used to do is run the antifreeze through the lines. Right. Okay? The pink stuff. Right. Yeah. There's two ways you can do it. You need to blow out the lines with a mm-hmm. thing, or you can run some antifreeze or whatever. And so what we had done, and I and you know I'm not very mechanically inclined or handy at all. So. Right. So we have got a people should own that should farm and own campers. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. And uh, so I took, so you got a head camper up there, um, put it in and Christy's dad was with me and I, you know, got it all jacked up, got the water hooked up and everything. And I turned the water on and we had not tested the water to make sure everything was going right. Um, before we left the house. Okay, which we should have done, but it was the first. I mean, we hadn't even been in the camper since we got it out of storage, other than to clean it. But I, so I get it up there, and I'm like, and I'm like, hey, you know, is is the water run? You know, anything running, anything on? And he's like, nope, nope, it's all good, because you know you're supposed to open up the spick, the handle, you know, the handles after after you clean them out. So if something if the water does, it drips out and doesn't settle on the pipes. Okay. Yep. So I lock up the camper, got to go help Izzy do some stuff. In fact, I think I had to come home. And then as I came back in, probably an hour and a half later, I'm walking past the camper and I noticed some water dripping near the door. And I'm like, what the heck is that? And I opened up the door. <laughs> And the water just comes pouring out <laughs> down the steps at me. Here, one of the one of the uh, handles was turned on in the back, and her dad didn't hear it running, and it ended up um, because because we had the tank closed up uh, underneath. It fill it went and it filled up. The drain in the sh- was it in the shower, maybe might have been in the shower, but it filled up. It ran so much water that it filled up the gray water tank. And oh, so, OK, yeah. So the water had n- nowhere to go down the drain. So it just went over the shower, the sink. I can't remember which one. It just started. It just flooded the floor. <laughs> it was better than I thought you were going to tell me. I thought you were going to say it froze over the winter and busted all your stuff. No, this was at the fair. Like, this is an hour and a half after I had parked it in. You hooked it up and turned the water on. Turned the water on. City water. Isn't that what they call it on the little thing when you hook up? City water. And it left, and it just, oh, my gosh. Um, So then then we spent the first uh, half a day of the fair. Had to go get a dehumidifier and just, gosh. Because, you know, some of those campers, they're not made out of the sturdiest wood. Yeah, I mean, they certainly charge you like they are yes i understand they're they don't mm-hmm. yeah and we were oh god we were so worried that uh, we were going to dry that out and it was just going to warp and uh just be worthless but no got it got it must i got it must have got it just in time and got it fixed so because everything was good but yeah so there you go i don't know how much that added to the affairs water bill that year but i'm sure it was uh it wasn't cheap <laughs> <laughs> so well, reason, our, fair reason doesn't have, our fair doesn't have any places to hook up so oh it, it doesn't you know, you're, you're expected to leave oh uh, well i don't not necessarily i think some of the kids sleep on straw bales you know how they sleep in the in the breezeways and stuff but oh, there's yeah. no there's no place to really to really um hook up really we got i mean there's probably 200 campers that are well that's because you are in a more affluent neighborhood, you know, than, oh, than Miller County, Missouri. <laughs> you know? Oh gosh. Well, speaking of speaking affairs and affluent, we're going to take a left turn here because I want to ask you about something because I think you probably have an opinion on it because I know you're kind of a shopper. Sometimes you like to shop. You like I to go can out. Be. I yeah. can be. You know, I mean, I, I can be. So, so I got a guest on the paranormal part of the podcast coming up. 
in a, I don't know if it's this week or next week or whatever, who saw a shadow person when he worked at a Sears store. And it got, and we got to talking about how crazy that was that there really aren't any more Sears stores around or JC Penney's or Montgomery Wards. You know, I seen a Kmart not too long ago and I said, there's no way that's a real Kmart. I looked it up <laughs> and I don't remember where I was. It seems like when I was driving to Virginia Beach and well, somewhere between here and Virginia, there was there, one. Well, there, uh, like the last time we were on the Outer Banks, which was three years ago, there was a Kmart on the Outer Banks. And it's, I think it has been replaced now. Our friends that go, that have gone the last two years said it was something else, maybe a Target or something now. But yeah, I remember when Christy and I first started dating, there was a Kmart down the road from where she worked in Cleveland and our Strong's up there. And uh, it's gone. Like it just went bye bye. I mean, so it was just amazing talking to this guy. And he, you know, we were, because I think it happened like 10, 12 years ago. But, uh, and he was talking about how the Sears store he worked in, Sears bought out another brand. And now I cannot remember what it was. But they attempted to combine these two stores. And he goes, what it did is it just made it watered down the Sears store or something that, you know, what you went into Sears for was appliances and tools and you know, sometimes clothes, I guess, but they really watered it down, which made it to then you couldn't find all the, to- you know, all the tools well, and appliances I, you went in for. Yeah, I and was going to say, I think, did they spin off? I guess I didn't realize Sears owned all those appliance manufacturing, you know, like Maytag and Kenmore and all those, you know, they owned all them. If you can believe they owned like seven different appliance brands. Okay. Yeah. And they spun those off to somebody and then somebody, you know, because now you go into whoever, the, whoever the, you know, they spun the Craftsman tool line off. And that's why you walk into Lowe's, you can buy Craftsman. You know what I mean? They're just, they're just completely. And you're right. I've got a Craftsman box wrenches from 25 years ago. And you compare them to the ones I bought last year at Lowe's because I bought a whole set. Um, I, I was missing one. I went in there and, you know, this one of those deals they want. You know, forty-two dollars for one wrench when I can buy a sixty-five piece for twenty dollars more, and the new ones aren't <laughs> anything like the old ones. You know, the old ones are like polished, and, and well, didn't they used to be like lifetime guarantee? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You could break it and carry it right in the Sears, and they'd hand you a new one. And that just doesn't that doesn't happen anymore, right? No, because you can't. Well, number one, you can't find a Sears, can you? Right, you can't find anybody that will work hard enough to break a wrench either. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the one thing I, when my dad passed away, the one thing that I did get of his, which is ironic because I'm not handy, is I have his Craftsman socket set. Yeah. And he worked as a maintenance guy at a factory. So he, you know, he was, had a lot, had a ton of tools or whatever, but he had taken and carved his name in every single one of those sockets. Mm-hmm. And I thought, man, how bad, how bad because is people that? People would steal them. Yes. I got all my uncle Ed's tools. Does he, does he do the same thing? Uh, yeah, they did. Yep. Yeah, sure did. You know, so that got me thinking, like, what what, what other places have closed from our childhood that you wish were still around that don't exist anymore? Most of mine are bars, but <laughs> that's a whole different deal. Um, I don't know. I mean, is Walmart still there? You know, we used to have... How did we even get into this? How do, Why are we even talking about this? Here we are waning about the America dying. Um I went into a True Value Hardware with my mother the other day, a down home, you know, yeah, True Value store. So she, I was at her house, and she wanted me to. Uh, this is how she starts off. Hey, how much time you got? <laughs> I don't know, Mom. It took me two hours and uh, three hours, and ten minutes to get here. You know, um, <laughs> would you fix my garage door opener? I said, What's wrong? With it? Well, it's the the keypad on the outside, right? So I said, okay, you know, 
she said it in generic. Yeah, she says the overhead door came and did something to her door, right? Like a maintenance deal. And her keypad was broke. And they said that uh, they would replace it for $89. But the guy told her, he said, you know, you can buy these keypads at Lowe's or Home Depot for $25, $30. So she said, okay, don't fix it. And then I'll get one of my kids to do it. That was three years ago. So three weeks ago when I was there, she says, you want to run to Home Depot or Lowe's and get a keypad? And I said, yeah, okay. I said, you want to drive? So she gets her purse and everything like it's going, like we're going on a, like, you know, I live two and a half miles from Lowe's. So when I want something, I just get in my truck and drive. I make four or five trips. It don't matter to me. She's packing up like she's going on vacation or something. She got a big old purse and all this stuff, you know, with two sets of eyeglasses, <laughs> keys. So she says, you want me to drive or are you going to drive? And I said, oh, I can drive. She said, no, I know where I'm going. We can drive. And so, you know, now I got to get in her car and she got a pretty nice new 2018 SUV of some sort. So <clears throat> we drive to Lowe's and there's about 15 different door pads. You know what I mean? So, and they started like $49. So it was probably 30 bucks three years ago, but now it's $49. And of course, the one she picks out is 100 and something and it, and it Bluetooth with her phone so she could open her door with her phone with her phone and if i if 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 she's not home see what happened about a month i don't know a year ago for work i was down southeast missouri and i drove by her house unannounced and i called her and i said you home and she wasn't there she and i and I'm, i was almost to her house i said are you home no nope. why and i said well i'm gonna be at your house in five minutes well I'm in town, you know, she, when I say in town, she lives in town, but she lives in a little town and everybody talks about going to the big town. So Cape Girardeau. So basically she felt bad because I had to sit there on the street for 30 or 40 minutes for her to get home to open the garage door for me. So <laughs> part of her quest was if, if, if I spend $150 on the garage door opener and you put it correctly, I can open the door if you're standing in front of a house again, you know what I mean? If you boys, that's what, if you boys are there, I can open the door. And I said, well, you know, if you give us the code, we can open it ourselves. <laughs> okay, so. But she wouldn't know. give you the code. No, she didn't give me the code because I programmed it. But, but, <laughs> anyway. I don't, oh, so I get in this little car of hers and we're taking off down. And if you've ever been to Southeast Missouri, it's like driving across a pool table for 300 miles. <laughs> Okay. It's flat as a flat as a board, and and row crops on both sides, row crops and irrigation ditches, and flood control ditches. So as we're leaving town, she says, I "Wonder if we can get that local." I said, "Oh, I'm sure any true value's got." It. And she goes, "Oh, we got a true value in town, and I want to. I like to buy local." So then we're trying to turn around out there on this river levee, you know, to. Uh, so you got a 75 year old woman with two sets of glasses trying to turn around where the road, <laughs> if you run off either side of the road, you're going to roll the road bed where we're at is 30 foot higher than the ditches in the fields on both sides, you know, because you know what I'm talking about when they borrow dirt yeah. for oh, a lot yeah. of those ditches to build these roads. Anyhow, <laughs> so we go in this little rinky dink town and we walk into a real old fashioned hardware store and i mean it was pretty nice you know he had the traeger grills and guns and bullets and just whatever he had but he had no he had no garage door open garage doors and i had to sit there and talk to him you know my mom the guy running it's about our age and maybe a little older and his dad who owned it and his grandpa owned it they're sitting there in chairs and my mom's got to walk me in, and and we've got to be do a, gr a gross introduction, a job interview, and <laughs> an exit interview, just to say they ain't got one, and we're leaving, so we can drive to town. I don't know where I'm going with this story. <laughs> hardware stores. They don't have the hardware stores. Uh, well, they get a this town we live outside of Crestline. They they have a they have a little. Heart, nice little hardware store, and uh, Christy and I always argue about how you pronounce the name. It's uh, I don't even want to say it. Hawkers, Hawkers, and she gets mad. She thinks I'm I'm mispronouncing it. It's H O C K L E R or something. Hawker, Hawkers, 
How, how would you well, mispronounce it? What if you do mispronounce it? The customer's I, always right. I don't. Well, but she's not even the boss. You know what I'm saying? Well, she is the boss, I guess. What am I saying? You're married now, buddy, so she is the boss. Um, yeah, it's just Hawker hardware and uh, H-O-C-K. And I say Hawker, and she gets mad and says I'm saying it wrong. I don't know how else to say it. It's H-O-C-K-E-R. <laughs> but anyways, it's the hardware store at the beginning of uh, Escape from Death Block 13 where Bronzy goes in and buys a hammer. Oh, y'all filmed in the hardware, your local hardware store? They did, yeah. Gary Jones and those guys did. It's one of those real deal old, you know, the... So did he, I guess he obviously just approached him and said, hey, can we... Can yeah, we... yeah, yeah, yep. It's one of those where it's all wood on the inside as far as like, you know, the, the, the cabinets and the showcases on the side. And it's got the ladder on the rail, you know, that... That slides right. all the way up and down, so you can yeah, climb yeah, up and get the yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool little, it's a cool hardware store for sure. I just don't know how to pronounce the name. <laughs> well, it happens, you know. I didn't get to tell you this because I didn't get to talk to you, but you're gonna love this. So you remember, I, I reluctantly put out a couple books a couple years ago, mm-hmm. and the guy who talked me into it. It took advantage of me and never gave me any of the money for selling a couple hundred. It happens. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. A John Kaikendall. And I'm why would you put, say his name on here? You just opened yourself up to some kind of unless he died. No, no. Oh. So here's okay. so here's what this the, here's what the scam this guy's pulling now. So he he ran this um, uh, magazine called Squatch GQ. You know, so they interviewed people in the Bigfoot world. Okay, and he had a couple other magazines, and anyway, so he, you know, he he took all my money that I was supposed to have earned, claimed that you know, Goodreads and Amazon didn't have the money to pay him to give it to me. Okay? Right, I can yeah. see that. Yeah, exactly. Well, Bezos got this new girlfriend and all her. <laughs> well, anyway, so uh, and he got another friend of ours who she started writing for his magazines. Well, of course, guess what. He didn't, didn't get, pay her either. He didn't pay her. So she ends up through hook or crook with all the magazines. Okay. And this, and I thought this guy just kind of disappeared because he was also a guy who was claiming um, to have done certain things in his military career that people were investigating and calling him out on. Okay. So he's just a real con man. A shameless con man. And um, so he kind of disappeared. And I thought, well, I, I, I don't have to worry about this yeah, guy. Good riddance, right? Yeah, good riddance. So I get a message Thursday from this girl, and she's like, hey, now, I don't follow this guy on any of his social media accounts or anything. So I don't know what he's doing. She goes, hey, you better go to his page. Isn't that your book? He's turning into a movie. I'm like, what? So I go to his page and he's talking about how this book of his is 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 in pre-production, going to get turned into a movie. And now there's not enough there for me to uh, to know that it's my book or anything. He's kind of vague or whatever. So I said, well, I'll keep an eye on it and see what else comes out. And she goes, well, he apparently got hooked up with some and she called him D-list actors, directors, stuff like that. And they the had made guy. a yeah, and they the had made a, they had made a movie with Don Wells. You know who Don Wells is? Nope. From uh she's Mary Ann from Gilligan's Island. Whoa, she old enough to make a movie? <laughs> I mean young I mean too old. I don't know. So so yesterday I get home and uh I just I'm like something told me I said go check out this guy's page. I go and sure enough, he's saying this is the move, and he gives a synopsis. It's the back of the book that I wrote. And he's like, "This is the, you know, my book is what he's saying." He said, "My book that I wrote is going to be made into it's going to be made into a movie." And here's the okay. synopsis. And I'm like, "You sob." <laughs> so I uh, I just. Call him out right there on on that Facebook post. Said, "How can you make a movie out of a out of a book slash screenplay that I wrote?" And of course, he right away blocked me. So, uh, so, so we got some wheels in motion. We're going to put a. Stop. So why would he block you? Well, because I 
called him out on his on his nonsense. He has such a terrible name in this whole um cryptid. I told you not to trust anybody. You're too good. You're too good. <laughs> That's why, you know. Well, look, man, I you know, I, I learned my lesson a little bit on that, but you still gotta trust some people. No, you, you know? don't. Uh, okay, fine. If you can't if you don't know where they're at, so you can go over there and break their kneecaps or something, you can't really trust them. <laughs> well, we'll we'll get a stop to it because I mean I was just astounded though. Like, like dude, if, the, the the annals of Hollywood and entertainment business is made up of everybody stealing somebody else's idea. What do they say? Um, if you ain't stealing, you're not trying. No, <laughs> I read something yesterday. It said the uh, oh, it don't matter. It was it was it was smart people copycat and brilliant people steal. I'm not going to go on a limb and call this guy brilliant. No, no, he doesn't <laughs> have to be. He, you sent it all to him. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it is disheartening to think that there's people that crooked, that are that crooked, and he's being that crooked, stealing an idea that's really not worth that much money in the first place. You know, it's not well, like it's got to be made. Somebody's going to have to take it. I mean, somebody's going to have to put some money into it to make it. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, but um, I mean, I'll be danged if if something I worked on, you know, is going to get turned into something like that, and uh, you know, and he's going to screw me again out of getting paid. I mean, that's terrible. You know, I mean, I go to work every day at the post office. Well, I, 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 yeah, I guess that's the, the world. America is full of hardworking people that get taken advantage of and and. And have no money, cheated out of their money, or you know what I mean. Hard work does not necessarily equate to financial security. There's a lot of hard work people who are broke. That's true. That's true. But I'm, but I'm, if you know, if a bigger power than me wants to screw me out of my money, I guess that's that's one thing. But if uh, some knucklehead that's nothing but a cheat and liar is going to, I'm not going to let him screw me out of my money again. He's already made enough. Maybe who knows? Maybe he took the original book money, and that's what he's going to use to fund the movie. <laughs> maybe that's what he's going to pay Don Wells to. Uh... I, I I can't. <laughs> I I don't want to make her mad in case her her pseudo name is Karen and she's my biggest fan. But <laughs> how old is she now? Don Wells. Yes. Um, I doesn't she have to be close to eighty? I don't. I, I would think, but that doesn't mean... Oh, she's now dead. So they made this movie. They took so long and she died before can you make the movie. Either that, I don't know. Wait a second. Sorry. Either that or they were Said wrong that. about... Um, maybe there's more than one Don Wells. No, maybe it was somebody else. Right. Uh, who knows? <laughs> maybe it was somebody you know, else. I'm going to have to land do... make-believe. I'm going to have... make-believe. I'm going to have to do some research and find out who it really was. Maybe she was mistaken on who, uh, um, you know what I'm saying? On who it was. She's pretty young, you know, so she mm -hmm. could have been mistaken. Well, I, maybe when did she pass away? 2020, but I looked at her, I, I looked at her stuff. And, maybe uh, they, maybe her family kept her around for social security payments or something. Maybe they were just responding to her email. So they thought that, this is how this guy. This is how this John, John Kuykendall describes himself on his IMDb page. John Kuykendall, international best-selling author, which he is not. What do you sell a book about? Nothing. It's a. It's a complete fabrication. Founder and president of the SFRT. I don't even know what that is. Squatch file. Oh, the Squatch Files research team. Founder of Squatch GQ magazine, Squatch GQ, geez, the Squatch GQ TV network, the Squatch GQ entertainment magazine. Oh, God. Squatch energy sports mag. What on earth is this guy doing? He is the author. This is what he's claiming. He is the author of Squatch Files that reached the number one best seller spot for three weeks on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Oh, my goodness. He he is he is something else. So he made sixty three episodes of Donna of the Darkness. What is that? Oh my goodness! Well, I can't do it. I can't do it. So let's talk. So 
so before before we jump off here, um, yeah, th- give me something good. When you know what I, you know what, Cle- we're cleaning out some stuff, and I sold my little uh, comic book collection to a guy. How many comic books did you have? Eh, like forty five of them. Some of them were some, good ones. I mean, I don't know what you. I don't some, know. Some were some good ones from the sixties. Like uh, had some Batman and Superman. And did one uh, guy who bought? I mean, did you sell them? Some of you knew. I put him up on Facebook Marketplace, and some guy from down around Columbus said, hey, I'd love to buy him. I talked to him on the phone. He said he's been collecting comic books for 40-plus years. And I'm like, you know what? I think they found a good home. So there you go. There you go. There's the positive. What, 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 what comic books were they, if you don't mind me asking? They were just – they were ones I had when I was a kid that – and I wasn't a big comic book collector. Right. But I did – but – um and I don't even know how I got some of those ones from the 60s. So I must have gotten them from somebody or something. Second hand, yeah, second hand, second time around, like second hand. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, there's some cool, I mean, some of those comic books, the artwork on them is just unbelievable. Back you in know? those days. Oh, the 60s and 70s ones of, um, I'll send you some of the pictures. In fact, I'll put them up on our Patreon page so so our listeners our patreon listeners can uh see some of the ones that i uh some of the ones i sold but they're really cool i mean they are i mean uh, i had a swamp thing i had an x-men you know just really random and what brought this on if you don't mind me asking because i'm i'm what to clean out you know i still got my two ice hoggers well you did tell our 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 fans that the shipping was over a hundred dollars for each one, right? Yes. The reason why I they haven't received them yet. <laughs> yes. Because I'm waiting them. for Karen at the post office to give me a good deal on something. <laughs> yes. I yes, I told uh I told our two uh recipients of the ice hoggers how much they were. And they were a little disappointed, but you know. Well, they, I they're still I still have them. I'm gonna do I'm gonna look st- uh, some 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 other avenues, you know. Well, I think I think at some point we'll run into Stacy Brown, and we'll give Stacy his in person. Yes, absolutely. We will give his in person. Now, yes. I think uh, Ryan was the other one. I think they got um, they got the other one, and he lives somewhere on the East Coast. I think, if my memory serves me, and who knows, maybe I maybe we'll be out. You know, I'll be on the East Coast at some point, and I'll and I'll get him his. Now he'll be disappointed because. He's a much bigger Howler fan than he is me. Well, so you know, maybe I'll, maybe I need an excuse to go on these. I'm gonna look up his address here in a minute. I know. I, I mean, I have it. I'm oh, yeah. see where it's at because maybe I can deliver it. To oh, him. geez, that would if, give me a reason to go out there. If you hand delivered the ice auger, it probably blows his mind. <laughs> but but we're getting the, our garage is getting redone this week. Like we're insulating it, right, putting, yep, putting yep. up walls and stuff, because we're getting our kitchen and living room redone in September. And so I have totes from Ten getting years divorced. Ago. Yeah, from getting divorced, getting married. Like I had to pack up my old office and stuff, and I've never been able to unpack some stuff. And so um, in, in, in the interest of not leaving a bunch of crap for the kids – you know, who know, and who knows what kids will even care, you know, because um, two of them don't. Because, um, in fact, I had a whole well, I had a whole big thing of DVDs and I had all the DVDs that Gabby and Olivia grew up with watching and, and stuff. Yeah. All the and kid I, DVD, uh-huh. Yeah. And I took pictures of them and I sent them to them last week. I said, hey, would you guys be interested? No answer. No, not even a go F yourself. Or means they don't have kids yet. One of these days they'll have kids and I wish they had them. <laughs> maybe, maybe. And I got a whole tub of stuff I saved of theirs or school paperwork, pictures and stuff. And so I'm going to I'm going to go through there and separate them. One box of Gabby's and one box of Olivia's. And I'll just send them to their mom's house and and maybe they'll appreciate having some stuff you know, of, uh, of theirs from the kids. But, but so I just was going through stuff and like, I, I got a bunch of three stooges stuff I put up for sale on eBay and, um, um, I'm going to find a place to, you know, something to do with those DVDs. Um, I put those comic books, I had some poker stuff. I had some other stuff I wanted to put up, put up, but it, <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't. I don't know if I'm going to sell them or give them away, but like I found that, you know, went through and I found a bunch of scrapbooks and stuff. And that picture I sent you of, uh, mm-hmm. 
of uh, me and Drew Bledsoe from working right. with football camp. It's like I forgot I even had this. So, um, so it'd be nice to get an office again so I could put some stuff up. But you know, it'll it'll come once one step at a time. We gotta once this guy makes your movie. Um, <laughs> maybe Paramount or somebody get you an office on the lot. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. <laughs>